Hello and welcome to the episode 207 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Some scouting done by a local TV station, some sightseeing in the agency, and the movement on someone's shoulder are some of the stories populating today's episode. Let's start with a gig on the 26th of July 1961. George, John, Paul and Pete Best performed another dance night at the Cavern Club in Liverpool, supported by Johnny Sandon and the Searchers and the Four Jays. In 1962, the same lineup of the band was busy at the Cambridge Hall in Southport for an event organized by NEMS Enterprise, the company set up by their manager Brian Epstein. The Beatles shared the bill with Joe Brown and his brothers. Brown's A Picture of You was number three in the charts at the time. Although they probably didn't play it on the occasion, the song was also the newest entry in the repertoire of the Beatles, with George Harrison as main singer. The night was also significant for the presence of the producers of Manchester-based Granada Television in the audience. The TV production company, spurred by the letters of their fans, had decided to check out the Beatles for a possible television appearance. Moving forward one year and we find the Beatles, now with Ringo Starr on drums, at the Audion Cinema in Weston Super Mare, Somerset, for the fifth of six consecutive nights. It was 1963. In 1964, instead, the Fabs performed live at the Opera House in Blackpool. It was the third of five consecutive Sunday night engagements in selected English seaside resorts. In 1967, with the yacht finally ready to sail the agency, Ringo Starr and Beatles assistant Neil Aspinall returned to England. It's not that they didn't care for sailing or for the group of islands that Alexis Mardos had found for the Beatles to buy, though. Ringo's wife, Maureen, was in the late stages of pregnancy and Ringo simply wanted to stay with her back home. The birth of their son Jason would be another couple of weeks off, but how is one to know? The other Beatles and the party of friends and relatives they had bought with them in Athens, though, were willing and eager. They went sightseeing around the islands south of Athens on their hired yacht. In the Beatles anthology book, George Harrison recalls, John and I were on acid all the time, sitting on the front of the ship playing ukuleles. Greece was on the left, a big island on the right, the sun was shining and we sang Hare Krishna for hours and hours. Eventually, we landed on a little beach with a village but as soon as we stepped off the boat, it started pouring with rain. In due course, the party also visited the group of islands they were supposed to buy, to live there in a commune of sorts, as we outlined in episode 200 of this very podcast. It's never been fully revealed which islands they actually saw. Common Beatles lore identifies it as the small archipelago around Leslo, but there is no Greek island with that name. The main island is instead identified as Aegos in the official documents held in the National British Archives. The only problem is that these official records are of no use to locate the islands either. There is no Aegos in the agency. I guess we'll never know. Let's close the episode with another historical event, happened in 1968. John Lennon visited Paul McCartney's home to listen to Paul's new song, Hey Jude. Paul was insecure about the lyrics, especially the part saying the movement you need is on your shoulder, but John liked them as they were. The song was immediately taught as single material, despite its quirks. It had a long structure right from the start, and its recording, ending up being more than seven minutes long, smashed any common practice about the length of a pop single. Hey Jude was actually about Julian Lennon, sad about the separation of his parents after John had found a new partner in Yoko Ono, 
but John thought it was meant for him, as an encouragement to let go of what other people said about his new relationship. And you know, I need some encouragement too. Creating content can be a rather lonely business and I love when I get your support. Visit www.simonmas.com support to find out all the things you can do, but remember that even a simple comment or a share would mean a lot. Join me tomorrow for more stories about the four you love, and thank you again for any help you might want to give me. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.